This is a case of a 59-year-old male who presents for a second opinion on a treatment plan of extractions and implants. After review of the FMX, a lesion was noted in the lower anterior jaw. During palpation of the area, patient admitted to having numbness in the area for the past four to five months. He said he thought it was due to a wisdom tooth and didn't think much of it. History of present illness. So the onset was four to five months, the causation unknown. Location is interradicular area between teeth numbers 20 to 24. The quality of the, the pain is numbness. Frequency when putting pressure on the area. And it only happens when pressing the area. The severity of the pain, there's actually no pain, it's just a numbness. Modifying factors that make it better, avoiding the area, and what makes it worse is contacting the area. For the medical history, it shows positive for GERD, depression, anxiety, and sleep disorder. This patient has an allergy to iodine, his current medications are Nexium, Ativan, Ambien, Lamictal, and blood thinners that's unknown. For surgery, he's had his gallbladder removed. For the extra oral exam, there were no contributory factors. No lymphadenopathy was noted. For the intraoral exam, description of lesion, there's a buccolingual cortical expansion between tooth numbers 20 and 24. Normal mucosal color, it's hard in texture, vital teeth on 20 through 24. Palpation caused him to jump, claiming numbness in the area. The periapical radiograph showed an ill-defined irradicular radiolucency with root displacement and root resorption between teeth numbers 20 through 24. However, the pano showed a different type of lesion. The panorex showed a well-defined corticated unilocular periapical radiolucency between 20 and 24. So for the assessment, Possible differential diagnosis, semiloblastoma, keratocystic odontogenic tumor, or radicular cyst. For the treatment plan, I gave the patient a referral to the oral surgeon for immediate biopsy of the lesion. I told the patient we're going to wait on extractions and restorative procedures, except for emergency palliative treatment or infection control until a definitive diagnosis and treatment of lesion is complete. Patient is aware that more teeth may need to be extracted due to this lesion. I plan to call the oral surgeon and discuss the case and to follow up with the oral surgeon and the patient when the treatment of lesion is complete. For long-term follow-up for more aggressive diagnosis due to high occurrence may be needed. Well, what was the outcome? I called the oral surgery office. Patient was waiting on medical insurance authorization for surgical removal of the cyst. I called the oral surgery office to fax a diagnosis and treatment plan, but patient had canceled his surgery. I spoke with the patient on the phone, and he said he had been ill the past month, and his wife was out of the country, so he had to cancel his surgery. He said he was going to reschedule his surgery soon. He was not too worried because the oral surgeon told him it looked like a cyst rather than a tumor. I encouraged him to reschedule his surgery. Unfortunately, the patient failed to follow up and I was unable to contact him. Well, what are the differences between odontogenic cysts and tumors? So odontogenic cysts are closed sacs that have a distinct membrane derived from rest of odontogenic epithelium. It may contain air, fluids, or semi-solid material. Odontogenic tumors, on the other hand, is a neoplasm of cells or tissues that initiate odontogenic processes. 
As I mentioned, I had three differential diagnoses for this case, and I'd like to discuss some clinical and radiographic features of these types of lesions. So number one, ameloblastoma. So in an early lesion, it may present as a painless bony expansion of the jaw. Radiographic exam shows a multilocular, but maybe unilocular when small, radiolucency in the area of a lo lower third molar, but may be found anywhere in the jaws. Some amelioblastomas are multilocular with internal septa and a honeycomb or soap bubble appearance. They are typically expansile with an osseous shell that represents the involved bone. They can perforate the lingual cortical plate of the mandible and extend into adjacent soft tissues as well. And they often resorb teeth that they contact. For keratocystic odontogenic tumor, they usually appear as unilocular lucent lesion with corticated borders that often are associated with impacted tooth. Although they are mostly located in the body and ramus of the mandible, they may also occur in the anterior mandible or anywhere in the maxilla as well. They are more likely to show aggressive growth than other odontogenic cysts and may have undulating borders and multilocular appearance. These characteristics may make these types of lesions indistinguishable from ameloblastomas. They may cause cortical thinning, tooth displacement, and root resorption. For a radicular cyst, most appear as round or pear-shaped unilocular lucent lesions in the periapical region. They are usually less than one centimeter in diameter and are bordered by a thin rim of cortical bone. They're usually associated uh, with deep restorations or large carious lesions and the cyst may displace adjacent teeth or cause mild root resorption. In this case, the teeth surrounding the lesion were actually vital and there were a no carious lesions noted. So what are the most common odontogenic cysts and tumors? A systematic review of the literature from 1993 to 2011 examined the frequency of the most common odontogenic cysts and tumors. In the preliminary search, there were over 5,000 papers identified, 26 of which met the inclusion criteria. There were over 18,000 odontogenic cysts reported. Of these, 54.6% were radicular cysts, the highest amount followed by 20.6% dentigerosis and 11.7% keratocystic odontogenic tumors. With the reclassification of keratocystic odontogenic tumors in 2005 as an odontogenic tumor, there were over 8,000 odontogenic tumors reported. 36.9% of those were ameloblastomas, followed by 14.3% that were keratocystic odontogenic tumors. So this systematic review found that odontogenic cysts are 2.25 times more likely than odontogenic tumors. And the most frequent odontogenic cysts and tumor were the radicular cyst and ameloblastoma respectively.